<laughs> Welcome to the Friday Nights. I'm Jason Sandberg. Fellas, I had a fantastic week. I got this in the mail just the other day, Cordath. Core Draft nice. by Andy Smith. I'm looking forward to uh, checking this out. You all know, uh, you can see I've got a sweet spot for the Jamboshima Conan uh, run. Uh, so I'm always eager to find something that's maybe in that same wheelhouse. So I'll let you know what I what I think of it once I get a chance to read it. Um, I did do some catch up. I did. I, I revisited uh, some '80s indie comics this past week. Oh, wow. I read the two issues of Paradox from Vortex Comics. You know, Craig, I think Vortex may have been a Canadian uh, comic book publisher. I could be wrong. Yep. Um, I recognize the name. Yep. The good stuff. Part. They did uh, Yummy Fur and uh, and uh, um, Black Kiss by Howard Chaykin and Mr. X, Mr. X as well. Yep. So I this was very psychedelic. Uh, I enjoyed rereading that one, and then I finally had time to go through um, Alpha Core. And um, he, I, huge uh, fan of Chuck Dixon. I loved Joe Bennett's run on Immortal Hulk. I wasn't too familiar with him before his Immortal Hulk run. Um, this was fantastic. If you if you wish somebody could do a comic book in the style of a TV, um, a TV cop procedural, but still right. be superheroes, check this out, fantastic. My only criticism is the inking got really weak towards the end. I think there was uh, it was a many hands inking uh, on this mm -hmm. to finish it. But otherwise, I greatly dug this. I'm looking forward to uh, Mike Barron's book coming from the Ripperverse soon. Um, enjoyed Immortal Rising uh, by by Aaron, uh, a guest on our show. I had a good time reading this. And I am busy, busy, busy at work on Jupiter Issue 2. Um, Jupiter Issue 1 is still uh, in demand on Fun My Comic and Indiegogo. Right now, I am into the layouts part of Jupiter 2. The backgrounds are essentially done. I am having a great time. I'm firing all cylinders. I'm looking forward to being able to uh, share some work with you very, very soon. Um, Craig, um, tell me, did you get your car back? Not yet. No, it's not. It's going to be until January. So it's sitting on the lot with about $2,000 worth of parts in it. So <laughs> I'm driving a Toyota RAV4 from 2012 right now, but it's still going. So. Well, t tell me you had some fun this week. What what happened? What's yeah. going on the combo front? So what's interesting, again, uh, I don't have any new pages because I can't spoil it for anyone who's backed Soul Factorize 4. The, the, the last eight pages I'm keeping a private. You got to back the book to get it. It's a very big plot point. Not going to spoil it. But uh, we've got six pages of the line art left, so the the final stretch of, of uh, Rise Issue Four is coming. Uh, in in the mail, I got uh, Brent's joined us in the audience, and I uh, hail to, to Brent. I got this. Look at this, beautiful. And he sent me both books. Gorgeous, nice and thick. Lots of reading ahead of me with that. And then that came with uh, this. This got a really soft cover. I don't know. If, uh, I, I really love. I, I love that. I got to figure out what paper he used for that. It's like yeah. a, a silk satin. But yeah, just gorgeous. Barton Brothers line art. And, you know, just good stuff. I don't, I don't want to spoil his book. You got to back his book. And then, yeah, I read as well. This this arrived. So yeah, same thing. Aaron was on our show, grabbed his book. And two weeks later, again, art by uh, Jose Garcia. And uh, I'm really, yeah, I really digged it. I, I'm going to have to read it again. I, I, I whipped through it really quickly, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, this book again i'm a, i'm a I, I i consume everything so yeah i as soon as i got that i think i read the first night so yeah that's where i'm at that's uh, i had a great week and uh well we'll bounce to you chris uh what, what do you have for us dude everybody is holding it up so i'm gonna join the club immortal rising <laughs> nice <laughs> i i i i know last week i i held up three books i made it through Aaron Lepresti's Blood Hunters, uh, Wraith of God. It's fantastic. Like, absolutely fantastic. And I am about halfway through Immortal Rising. Still have yet to read Alpha Core. Um, I have been uh, also reading Vigilante's Creed by our friend Brent Turner. And um, these are... Oh, wow. this, is, this is so cool. This uh, whole wraparound cover thing that he did. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Skunk Works did it. Um, yeah. Nice. It's, it's pretty dope. But, uh, and I'm, w I'm with you, Craig, on, on this. Like, this kind of, it's like real soft cover. It's yeah, beautiful. It's and, like, yeah, it feels really good. Like, you hold it in your hand, you know, and you're like, I don't want to let go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also i would like to just make sure you guys notice my bookmark here 
And mm. uh, that's Joe Frankenstein, or well, Joe Frankenstein's uh, uh, book or whatever. Um, and it says, read more comics. Nice. Cool, cool. So, dude, Richard, are you what is going on? also reading Immortal Rising? No, no, but I am reading Core Giraffe. You know, I, nice. I saw it. You know, uh, read it right when I first got it. I also got Aaron Leprestes, but I left it in the living room. But I mean, I got a, you know, I, I've been getting everything ready with the campaign. But I mean, I got a good reading list, man, because I also got Fiendish one mm -hmm. and two. You know what I mean? So nice. I got that. Uh, I got, uh, man, uh, Aaron's. And uh, I'm waiting on uh, Jimmy's to come out. Like, uh, yeah, Jimmy Riz. Uh, yeah, the the Dragon Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, that is, is looking amazing. So, so much good reading to come out, you know, uh, and all that. So, that's, uh, yeah, there really I'm, is. Yeah. It's a lot of time, you know. It's a vibrant market, you know. And I, before we get into our topics, I, I was thinking about something today. And, you know, like, Everybody knows that mainstream comic sales are down. Obviously, manga is dominating. But, you know, there's there's really no way for us to track numbers on indie comics. Like, individual creators can track their sales or whatever, but there's no there's no way to know. And, I, I you know, I, I kind of wonder, like, how much of that gap, you know, all those sales that are lost, you know, from – from Marvel mm. and DC and Image and IDW and all them, you know, mm. I, I I wonder, you know, just like how much how much money is being spent, you know, how many issues are getting into the hands of people, you know, from from indie creators, and I I, I bet that it's a pretty big number because it's indies are so easily accessible now, you know, mm. and and it's awesome. We're having a blast, all of us. Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's an excitement. I, I feel there's excitement when you back a creator, and then you follow him, and, and uh, you know you get to see the numbers go up, and it, and, it, and it's and it's great. And then the the book comes, and then you get to see other people react and, and talk about it. It's like a book club, you know. Yeah, uh, you know, just how we're talking about Andy's book. You know, like I, I think Andy's book was great, man, especially uh, uh, at the end. Because here he, here's what's crazy. I'm like, ah, the the dialogue sounds off. Like, I, you know, in my review. I was like, yeah, the dialogue sounds off. Like these characters sound different. And then you get to the end, you're like, oh, I saw what he was doing. That was that was charming, you know. And it's uh, it, it's a real fun and charming thing that he did. That uh, I don't know. Like indies, you could take a chance like that. If you read the end of it, it's like something you could take a chance on. And then mm -hmm. I, I don't know if uh, if a mainstream person would uh, or or editor would kind of like give the green light to that. But it's like Andy, uh, you know, he got his fans. They trusted him to crowdfund it. And he delivered. And let me tell you, man, that book, man, it has monsters in there that look amazing. The most beautifulest women I seen drawn in in the last. Uh, you know, I might have to hide the book. The wife might hear that stuff. But yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> she'd be like, "Give me that book." You know, like, what, what what is this about? You know, hide it from your son. You know, but man, like Andy could draw the curvature of a woman. The like, and it's consistent. And like, uh, like you were saying with the uh, Alpha Core, like. The inking at the end and at different spots is like ah, it kind of throws you off. But you know ah, the book's so fun, you, you just go through it. But Andy, it's just consistent. It's just greatness. It's just love, passion. And so when you read it, you're just like, oh, this is, this is like we have this. Uh, you know, we have a passion for these uh, independent comics, and it's it's a, cer a certain feeling that when you're actually reading the book and you're like, oh, this independent creator has that same passion. It's like a connection, and it's mm -hmm. it, it's uh you know you the used to get in the mainstream, well. yeah. you know. The, there are some books like I read Conan from uh, Titan with the Jim Zub uh, run. Hey man, it's just it's just beautiful. It's so easy in the eyes, and oh man, it's just you know I, I literally get that digital so I can read it day one because I live in a small town, and then I'll go <laughs> and, and buy it from a, a comic book store and get it shipped in for my little collection. But you know it's uh. It got to be that interested. People want that. They 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 have this connection, and if you could uh, get that connection, then man, you're in it to win it. And and part of what you know, what makes the indie scene, the crowdfunding crowdfunding scene work is um, the people, the backers, and the people in the chat. So Craig, on the topic of the chat, who's who's in the chat tonight? 
Yeah, so we'll start off with our chat again. Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of Friday Nights. And yes, here we go. Fritzy Schnitzel is joining us. The Savior Fair is everywhere. So yes, thank you for joining us again, Fritzy Schnitzel. I ran into him in Ethan's chat as well. Uh, he was nice. he was worried about me being sensitive to the things he says. You say whatever you want. I'm just happy for you. To be here. <laughs> uh, Brent's joining us as well. We are showing his book. He says, "Hail Jabronis, hail to you as well, Brent." Thank you. Hail, for hail. As a yeah. worst. Uh, Force pubs here again. Uh, Richard's uh, joining us again. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, subscribe to his YouTube. You see him uh, right there. And again, let's let's support each other. And then appreciate that. Uh, Jackknife, as always, our official timekeeper for our yep. show. He's joined us. I think he's been here every single episode. I think That's so. so cool. He lets yeah. us know when to start and when to stop, and we never <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> uh, Tevin That's Daniels, hilarious. join us. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tevin's so cool, man. Tevin's an upcoming writer himself that's been, uh, you know, hanging out around uh, my channel. And, you know, nice. I'm glad that uh, he got to go on this channel because I don't stream every day. And, you know, there's always mm -hmm. time to rewatch uh, shows or catch it live. You know, I know he's a big, yeah. uh, uh, the biggest problem fan, like, you know, but, uh, you know, now he's he knows this to come back to it. It's in his history. And nice. if he does it, I'll be like, I'll hit him up on uh, Twitter. Like, hey, man, you got to put in at least like 20 minutes, man. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Vulcan Libs is here. He says, happy Fridays, dudes. Thank you as well. Vulcan Libs for uh, your dedication to the show. We really appreciate it. Here's one that shocked me. Surprise. Nick Weiser is joining us. Nick Weiser. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. And yeah, that's uh. That's everyone we have so far in our, in our Dude, chat. The first time I ever saw um, Nick Weiser's profile picture, it was on Twitter. And um, that exact font was the font for a number in my first band when I was a teenager, no. Cork 74. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that font, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> Speaking of crazy. It's that time, fellas. All right, is it? Richard, mark your mark your mark your uh, time mark your clock here. We've got about thirty minutes before he gets too loopy to, to stream. Okay, <laughs> so we're at six fifteen. All right, <laughs> all right. So here so, we go. So, so Craig, yeah. what what is this? What what's going on here? Okay, so yeah, our first topic here tonight is brought to you from uh, Euro News Culture, and this one here. Menu signed by Mao Zedong sold for a quarter million euros at auction. The irony behind that, right? The one step forward, you know, 40 to 80 million people die of famine. And uh, he sells this menu for a quarter million euros. I wonder how many people that could have been. But, uh... Yeah, so so Richard, uh, the uh, Great Leap Forward by under Chairman Mao in the nineteen late nineteen uh, early nineteen fifties, uh, forty five million people died of starvation. Uh, mm -hmm. How crazy is it that uh, that that a menu signed by this guy is uh, is going yeah. for auction? How how crazy is that? Well, like when you say the name Mao Zedong, it sounds like a like a porno name for a cat or something, you know? <laughs> right, it is. Like, Meow Zedong. That's where he got it. <laughs> so. It's uh yeah it is <laughs> and then I'm you know yeah I mean imagine how many uh people were affected by this guy uh how much uh, Still. uh pain and, and uh generations being affected by yeah. him so to get a menu signed by him is like you know yeah for a guy who's uh, anti capitalist it's kind of kind of wild to think that uh, people are, are are willing to spend that much money to to get his so 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 Chris take a look at that menu there um you know what what CGC uh rating would you give that menu there uh that's definitely well I don't know I'm thinking. But, I'm, I'm gonna did you see there when they signed it though? Because it's not official if they're not. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm gonna say it's a seven point five. And the receipt for the transaction should be stapled to Mal's corpse. <laughs> I think his corpse. I I think his corpse is on display in a crystal sarcophagus. Yes. I could be wrong. It is. I could Just be wrong. like linen. So, so Craig, you know, I, my, my comic book shop, there's this one guy who spends too much and he like hides his, the, he, every Wednesday, he, you know, he's a Wednesday warrior like myself. Every Wednesday he's got to hide his comic books in the trunk when he drives home. Cause otherwise his wife will get mad. How, how mad would your wife be if you spent a quarter of a million dollars on, on a menu? 
on a mouse on Sherman Mount, she would definitely uh, there'd be a sit down. Uh, <laughs> a sit down. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's just it's insanity. Yeah, I don't I don't get like some people just got way too much money on her hands. And and to have that kind of money and be like, hey, I'm gonna buy the you know, one of the fathers of communism. I'm, i I need that signature. But uh <laughs> Yeah, Absolute, man. What, like, absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. That's so, money laundering involved, man. Like, you know, you hear yeah. about these fine art, and then it's like they buy it off them, and then this and this, and then they donate it to a to a a, a, a museum, and they say, oh, now it's worth uh, 275000 so I'm going to need a receipt because I'm donating it to you, and then they take it off on their taxes. This is all just, you know. Yeah, money laundering. Right. Thing. Yeah, yeah, man. All right, so – as indie creators, none of us are bankrolled or owned by the Chinese Communist Party. So we are free to, to say things like this. And uh, Chairman Mao, under his rule, about 100 million people were killed in China. So before we go to the next topic, I do want to ask you, Chris, um, when is Chairman Mao's um, dentist appointment? Uh, at 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Craig, what's next? Okay, so our next topic for this evening here. We've got uh, this one I got from uh, Fox News 35 uh, from Orlando. A Florida man who received Waffle House tattoo arrested after refusing to pay for it in the affidavit. So essentially he got the tattoo and then flipped out his pockets. He had no money. Uh, they tried to work it out with him that, you know, maybe he could pay later if he could prove he had money in his bank. He never had the money in his bank, never had any intention of paying from the get-go. Um, so. Hold on, hold on. There's a reason he didn't have any money in his bank. Jeremy Renner suffered a terrible accident recently. And I don't know why he's out getting a tattoo or why he's in Florida. But, uh, I mean, apparently he's a big fan of Waffle House. Obviously, you know, his Avengers gig isn't paying off very well. You know, but I'm glad to see that Jeremy Renner is out there um, not paying his bills. So, so, so Richard, um, this is a complicated, uh, legal entanglement and, and I, I did my research and I, I checked, I checked to see, did, did the code of Hammurabi cover a scenario like this? Because we're all familiar with an eye for an eye. We're all familiar mm -hmm. with the principle that if an architect's, uh, house collapses and kills the occupant, you kill the architect. I looked, I looked to see, did, did Hammurabi cover a delicate mm -hmm. scenario like this where there was a tattoo and the person didn't want to pay for it. I came up with nothing. I came up with nothing. So, so Richard, as our guest, use your wisdom of Sol uh, use the wisdom of wisdom of Solomon here. What should be, what, what should be the punishment for this young man? I, I don't see a punishment. I say, uh, it should be the Knicks, uh, Mike Barron cover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I say, uh, get Mike Barron on the phone. Like, Hey, listen, and then, uh, you know, have him come on as a guest and like, you know, we're going to use your likeness. And, and once we raise 250, you know, or, or we meet our goal, we'll pay off for your tattoo. You know, I think it could be, I mean, that's what a capitalist would do. Like, let's make an event out of this. We got to do something, you know, I uh, have I the, hope, have the, yeah. I, I am hoping that in issue three of Florida, man, he does get a Waffle House tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so Craig, I'm, you know, I saw the headline and I know we picked this as the topic. It wasn't until just now that I, I really take a take it. I see a photo of the tattoo and I'm looking at the craftsmanship and the draftsmanship of that tattoo. Do you think the guy has a point in not wanting to pay for that kind of work? Uh, uh, still, I mean, there's multiple faults with the So for starters, as a tattoo artist, they should know you always get half up front and half after the job. I mean, that's the same thing with any artist, right? Half up front, mm -hmm. half after. So that's a failure on his part. Um, next question is why Waffle House tattoo to begin with? I mean, that was like losing strategy out the gate. I mean, I don't know, that's one of those places I only stop by, like at a you know truck stop to go get fuel, and you know I wouldn't go out of my way to go to a waffle house let alone get a waffle house tattoo uh but then to get it and not pay for it after all said and done or not even have the money to pay for it in the first place uh i don't know i mean i'm, I'm a capitalist there's a lot of uh, uh, people fault to go around for that uh, a lot of lessons to be learned for that like don't i don't know uh only thing i can think of is is yeah lots of lots of lots of blame to go around Dude, as someone that has several tattoos that were 
gotten in the living room floor of my apartment when I was 18. Um, I can understand why I got a Waffle House tattoo because you know what, man? Like he lives in Florida, so he knows the importance. Wa- Waffle House closes, that means disaster is imminent. You know, it, they they are the <laughs> largest uh, uh, warning sign for hurricanes in Florida. Uh, people don't understand how important <laughs> Waffle House is to the community in, in where he lives. You know, and he's just saying, I'm here to save lives. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Right. <laughs> I like it. That's like an alarm yeah. system. Like, like the towers. <laughs> or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Gondor calls for aid. <laughs> All right, Craig, what's uh, what's the third topic today? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're whipping through these tonight. Okay. So the third one, we might dwell on this one for a little while because this mm. one developed as I built this one. So it originally came out from Bleeding Fool, but as I was posting this, more transpired. So the original article from Bleeding Fool, comic writer Mark Wade accuses Mark Millar of uh, attacking... Gail Simone. So, of course, right first came the name calling, the belittling, the belittling, the insulting. Uh, Penny Parker's writing a book. You see there the cover. I- I'm going to grab a copy because I'm really curious to read it. Generation That's going to be fun. That's yeah, going to be fun. Sort of yeah. a mock up of uh, Generation Kill, which was a funny, fun series I actually enjoyed watching. But uh, in any case, she's putting this out, an expose on the Whisper Network. And of course, mainstream pros are absolutely losing it, right? So, Mark Millar, people don't know, he's a uh, um, I think he's responsible for Kick Ass. I think that's one of his biggest. Kick Kick Ass wanted yeah. Jupiter's Legacy, Starlight, then uh, Mar- the Marvel Civil War, the original um, 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 uh, Ultimates run, and then he did the second wave of um, the Authority. And so, Al- in other words, he has screw you money. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. and well, he's he- a big exec at Netflix, so I was going to add as well. So I mean, yes. he doesn't even have to get involved in comics. He's just doing yeah. this because of his love of yeah. comics. He's decided yeah. to get down and 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 he's he'll put out two or three like mini series uh, a year, but he gets top talent. He gets great artists mm-hmm. to work on it, like Frank Quietly and so forth. Um, and so yeah, he he loves comic books. That's why he still keeps a toe in it. But like he does have the the Netflix bot the Millarverse. And they've made it. They've made. Uh, they're they're adapting. You know his his catalog of, of books as a Netflix series. So he's doing this for the love of the medium. Right. So so as this was transpiring, you know, uh, a whole bunch of came out the woodwork. I I think this is like the third week we've now covered this topic because it's just not ending. You know, I had Donnie Cates making a, a hammer analogy. Uh, Heidi McDonald mm-hmm. coming out and slinging her mud. Uh, Gail Simone, you know, crying victim over this book and, and, you know, all the pros trying to pretend like they never really tried to cancel and whisper network and conspire. No, no, it was never any of that. We're all just victims of you mean customers who don't like anything that we create, no matter how hard we try to entertain. Bigots. All you are bigots. It's always the customer with them. Always the customer. So as I was putting this together, Mark put an interesting one, and I blew up that tweet right here. So he was responding to this Stephen uh, McKee, and he says, I think a lot of us would just rather see the industry burn down, which is a shocking uh, revelation to come out. Rather see it burn down than get together with the alt-right. Okay, sure. Um, So basically, (laughs) admission of guilt. uh, before we up. before we get to his, so I I do want to mention he had a backpedaling statement or he had a he had an additional statement um, th- that really makes this even more bizarre, but um um what so so Chris I I'm gonna run the here's 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 I want to run this by you and this is this there's something to what I'm about to say exactly there's something to what I'm about to say I don't know if I'm if I'm onto something or not. But if you make if you make a um, a categorical statement, uh-huh. saying which is basically an either or statement, uh-huh. and the either or statement is either I'm going to um, change, I'm going to I'm going to um, listen, I'm, I'm going to do what these customers are asking me to do, or I'm going to let the industry sink. So facto, does that not mean that the people who are asking you to do something a certain way? have the majority of the money and are abstaining from buying your products. 
isn't that actually what he's saying without realizing it? Yes. Yes. I, I, that's, I mean, that's actually what I was going to bring up is <clears throat> you know, that statement alone shows what we have all speculated. And, and honestly, what we know is that they are destroying it on purpose. They're like, mm. they, they have all, all of these IPs, you know, everything at Marvel and DC and then, you know, all the other nerd IPs, Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, everything. They they would rather see it burn and and don't do the gaslight, you know, rather than work with the alt-right. Nah, nah, nah. You would rather see it burn than actually listen to the customer base, the fan base that has been following for decades and decades and decades and and not only that but to to just wipe away all of the source material as well because it, it like this statement that he's made is pretty much saying like I don't care what um um uh, uh anybody I mean I don't care what Jack Kirby ever wrote you know, because the thing is, is that's the stuff that we love, you know, and, and he's just like, I am the god of this industry and you will bow or I will burn it. it, it you're, you're right that we love it. And, and so, Craig, you're you're you love comic books and you're a father. Um, right. Looking at Mark Wade here, who's who's getting he's late middle age, childless. Um, is this a cautionary tale for people to not to not become um, so obsessed with something that you don't have a, a balance in life? Like you don't have a family, you don't have children, you have no legacy. No, <sighs> besides your work, you have no legacy beyond your work. Is this a cautionary tale for people about 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 not over intellectualizing and 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 not, and and not not having? Is is this an argument for having family, uh, Craig? Well, okay, so, oh, man, there's so much to unpackage with this. So for starters, uh, I want to address one thing Crooked Painter set up here. Uh, so Mark Wade's version of the alt-right is anyone who doesn't vote the same way he votes, okay? It's a it's a generalized brush he applies to anyone. Which is, a very, think, which is a very totalitarian, authoritarian thing to say in the first <laughs> place, right? Right. You either think the way I think, believe the way I think, don't criticize what I what I put out, and and don't disagree with me, or you're alt right. Yes. Uh, so, so no, it's not it's not uh, actual Nazis. I mean, I very rarely see actual Nazis this day. I haven't seen them since the nineties. Honestly, the I can count on one hand how many Nazis I've seen in real life. I'm um, in my forty-two years of life, and my right. never mind. I'm gonna show. I you. I love it We're when Captain. I love it when Captain America punches commies and I love it when he punches Nazis. Go That's ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so tying into Mark Millar and his hissy fit and all the other ones and all their hissy fits. So what they've done is they've taken an industry that was built for 50 years. They took IPs that didn't belong to them, that they had a responsibility to nurture much like a parent does with the father, raise it properly, raise it with morals, you know, good and evil, keep it sacred and, and grow it. Like, as we like to say, leave, leave things better than they were the way you found it. But instead of that, these 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 fatherless, uh, you know, politically motivated, authoritarian, my way or the highway, agenda driven people took an industry that was built long before they got there, decided to not bother to do any of the research or the work or get to learn or love the, the thing that they were handed because they were all inserted into the industry. Uh, just did whatever they wanted, you know what I mean? Uh, turned it into a joke, actually attacked their own customers and fan base because to them, uh, they're indifferent to how money is made because they get paid anyway, so they don't care. Chased away half the fan base, then put out a crappy product that then further alienated uh, the fan base. And then listening to the fan base, you know, try to fight for the things they love and try to give valid criticism and try to say, Hey, what are you doing to the things we love? We've loved these things for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Then it further insulted them, which is where we are now today with, with it all crumbling. But rather than them accept any responsibility whatsoever, they still continue to point fingers and, and blame it on everybody but themselves. So I want to, I want to shoehorn in one observation before we, we yeah. before we go to Richard. 
there's a subsequent a tweet from Mark Wade where he says, he basically says, even though those loudmouth alt-right CG people have a lot of good points, I still don't like them. So he's admitting, he's admitting that the criticism, a, a great portion of the criticism is valid. He just did not like some of the, the people, he didn't like some of the personalities of the people who were telling him, but he agrees intellectually. He agrees. They have good valid points. He didn't quantify what percentage he agreed with, but the point is he is saying, I agree. You've got a valid point. You are correct, but I'm not going to take your suggestion because I don't like you. Richard is, is what are your thoughts? What are your observations? What do you think? I think it's performance art. Cause, uh, like I went to WonderCon, I want to say like 2014, 15, and uh, <clears throat> back when I, before I even did a comic, I would go to these, uh, you know, indie comics and this and that. And one of the one of the panels they had was for Comicology, so I was like, oh, dude, I gotta go to this. How do I get my stuff on Comicology? You know, and uh, so I went there, and, and it was the head of Comicology. This is before they went to uh, Amazon, to uh, Amazon, right? And, and Mark Wade was there. And then Mark Wade was just talking about, yeah, the mouse is going to get everything. The mouse, this is before Disney owned it, but or just got Marvel. So he's always been, it seems like it's a control thing, you know? So, oh, the mouse is this, the mouse is that. And it, it was so crazy, him speaking about the mouse, that the comicology guy is like, uh, you know, uh, comicology has always had a great relationship with Disney, and we hope to continue. You know what I mean? He had to get the PR speech right there. So I was like, holy fuck, they're shook. You know, so it's like, it seems that, this whole play, this whole performance of I'm the right, I'm the or, or I'm the good guy, I'm the good guy, the, the alt-right has got him power. And, and the louder he screams it, and now that power is, is being uh, relinquished from him. And so now he's throwing a tantrum like a baby. That's how I see it. You know, it's just from that interaction to this interaction to, you know, uh, uh, even bringing up the points that, uh, you know, customers have money. They're just putting it in their pockets or spending it elsewhere. Uh, CG does have some good points, but you're not willing to uh, to uh, give any ground. That It's a man holding on to power or, or the, the, the power that he thinks he has, but he really does it because the power is always with the customer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and in, in terms of power being with the customer, um, Chris, would you would you agree that that you you don't expect every comic book published to uh, categorically appeal to every one of your tastes, but you don't want to be called names. You don't, you, you don't want to have the publisher engage in ad hominem attacks on you just because you like a certain kind of comic book, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I, I mean, honestly, like I read comics for the same reason anybody else reads comics. I just want to get lost in a story. You know, mm. I, I read books, I play video games, uh, you know, all, all those entertainment things are because I work 60 hours a week and I want to mm. be able to turn my brain off and send myself to another world, you know, and if, if I'm getting beat over the head with some kind of crazy message or I'm being called names, talked down to um you know I, I mean i don't i don't know if you want to radicalize me but uh well i mean too late but you know <laughs> i mean that's but that, but that's really what it comes down to is is like oh, okay you know look mark wade um we get it you are a lonely spiteful you know cat lady um you know <laughs> sitting sitting at home you know, probably you sniffing your markers. Probably high she, high blood pressure. I yeah, see high, high blood pressure. Sure, you know, and and you're and you're miserable. I yeah. I don't want you to project your misery on, into your stories. Well, actually, go ahead. I'm not reading your stories. You know, go ahead. Other miserable people might be into that, but your sales say otherwise. So I so you know I I am actually. When it comes to his work up uh, up until maybe like ten years ago, I am a huge Mark Wade fan. I've got, I've got his Daredevil run back there. I've got his Fantastic Four run back there. Um, when I when I read his work, oftentimes I I can I connect with him and I share his love of the medium and his love of some of these characters. And when he's firing all cylinders, he's firing all cylinders. 
And I don't care at all how he votes. I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't, and I don't want him to know how I vote. It doesn't matter. Um, but what I observed happening over the last, um, and, and, and perhaps because he was so intimately involved with all new, all different Marvel. And because that was such a, a meltdown, he may have doubled or tripled down. Um, but what began to happen around the time of all, all new, all different Marvel was, I think um, it, it, it's the phenomenon of um, the intellectual who loves, loves humanity. I love humanity. I'm an intellectual. I love humanity, but I really hate people. I really hate people. Mm. Craig, are you picking up that vibe? Uh, um, are, are you a fan of his earlier work? What, where does he sit with you? Uh, I, I'll be honest. I'm not even sure if I have any Mark Wade stuff. So I'm kind of glad I, I, haven't, I haven't called his name from anything in any of my short boxes. So I'm lucky there. Uh, no, I mean, just look at this just as uh, it, it's more so the great greater picture of it. And, and remembering what happened between him and Richard C. Meyer. So yep. if, if you're not aware, Mark Wade went away for a little while, right? Yeah, he 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 came out hard against Richard C. Meyer. Richard C. Meyer was about to be published. I want to say Antarctic Press. Yeah, uh, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. That's who it was. Basically, sent a, a night letter to them, telling them that this guy is this and that, and a bunch of names. You know, all the names they like to throw out, the ones that he's still throwing out. And then he got slapped with uh, a lawsuit, which which a lot of people crowdfunded and paid Re money. Restraint, and restraint of trade, right? Or yeah. was tor 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 was it tortoise torture tor tortoise Tortious. insurance? Torches in, in Torches Entertainment and Restraint Entertainment, right? <laughs> yes. I like Tortoise Interference. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, Tortoise Interference. And and it's still questionable how that would have went if, if it went full ways, but obviously whatever transpired, did, uh, Zach decided to settle, and then they both settled, and they released their statements, and away they went. Mark obviously didn't learn anything from that experience because here he is. He's still back to his old tricks, still back to his name-calling. Uh... That's basically all I know about Mark Wade, to be honest with you, is is that. And then Dude, here he is again. Why can't these people, like any of, I, even like no matter, even even you, Jason, even you, Craig, or whatever. Yeah. Why do I have to know every detail about what you think about yeah. every single thing in the whole world? Just yeah. write social media a story. Right? Yeah, you know, and and I get it. I get it. In the modern world, like we use social media and we use this platform, um, you, you know, and things like that. And and we try to get to know you guys and and let you know get to know us. But like, like you don't have to comment on everything. And if you if you hate somebody, if you despise. You know whether it's your customer or another creator, one of your peers, or or anything mm -hmm. like that. Shut your mouth and just right. outright them, out draw them, mm -hmm. out whatever. So you know, so it's the same way. Like especially a military background. I mean, uh, there's you know a couple of us have military backgrounds. One in the chat. I mean, I I've, I've been in troops with people who I don't get along with and leaders I absolutely don't like and I hate. But at the end oh, of the yeah. day you have a responsibility to do the mission. And it's like, look, even if we don't like each other, we have a professional uh, responsibility to, to accomplish the mission. Let's just worry mm -hmm. about this, get along and get our mission done. And at the earliest possibility, we'll all go our separate ways, right? It's just, it's just, uh, just basic respect in life. That's why we have laws. It's fine to, to work beside somebody who you don't like, What it is is you can't discriminate against them. You can't mm -hmm. attack them. You can't go out of your way to, you know what I mean? So I don't know where we got in this, this society where we've gotten to these groups where now if you're not in my group and you don't think what I say, you don't believe what I say, you must be destroyed. You know, like uh, the entire concept is insanity. And it, it just, it reminds me of, I keep going back to it to kindergarten, right? And being in the sandbox and there's a toy you want to play and other kids call you stupid names and throw sand in your face and fighting over toys. This is literally where we've gone as a society. We've regressed to child childish behavior. I'm watching politicians do it now too. The name calling and the mudslinging. And I mean, these people are making $200,000, $300,000 a year and they're supposed to be running things, but they would mm -hmm. rather be on social media, throwing mud, and and basically back to high school, uh, high school cliques in the cafeteria and, and you know the cool kids table and no one else is allowed to be there. Bring back dueling. 
So Richard, before we get into into your project, um, wh- uh, what have you observed in terms of the in terms of the idea of of uh, w- when did you first become aware of these are creators that that are trying to stop other creators from 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 working in the business or expressing themselves and so forth? What did you see and when did it occur to you something something was rotten? Well, this is a this. Uh, let me just touch uh, this and then I'll answer that. Uh, it's, uh, with, 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 uh, this, it seems like a lot of these people, they're making it about them instead of making it about the character, right? Cause the mission, the greater good. It, 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 it's yeah. about Superman. It's about daredevil. It was never about you mm-hmm. and their fucking little ego can't figure that out. It's always been about the character. You listen to Stan Lee. He talks about the character and the Hulk and this and that. When I came up with it and he gets so excited about the character, it's never about Stan. And, and guess mm-hmm. what? I mm-hmm. never knew who Stan Lee voted for. And I, exactly. never, I never wanted to know. Yeah. It was just... This is, oh, listen, I got this great idea for a story and this and that, and you're going to love it in this character. And he has so much compelling and he has so many obstacles. They took a, a, a job, an employment, a situation, what have you, uh, uh, to, to, to make it about the character. And they failed at it. They made it about themselves. We don't care about Mark Wade. We care about the characters that he's on and, mm-hmm. and give us a good story within that character. And if you do that, then... You deserve the audience's praise, but they're trying to compete with the character and they'll never compete with the character. And another Mm -hmm. thing, too, I've seen this with hip hop where they only want to make club club songs, you know. And listen, I love club songs, but I love that underground stuff like but Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear a moral technique at the fucking strip club. So I understood a purpose of having these club songs, you know, but I just wanted it to be a a variety. Yeah, if you want to have the LGBT and this and that, that's cool have it but uh you know have it in addition over there don't change uh these characters you know because again it's not about you it's not about your cause it's about the character and that's what's really people have a relationship with the character they can give a fuck about the rest right now that relationship sometimes goes uh, a little bit further if we have an artist that does a great run you know, if we have a, a a writer that really like spoke to the character, really did the character justice, then be, they become somewhat of a hero. But even then, it was never about them. It was only that they did the character justice, you know, and that's where uh, I, th- I think it comes off, you know, and that's where I think uh, they're, the, they're, they're, they're in a competition that they can't win because their ego will never uh, satisfy us. We don't care about them. They're not interesting. We care about the talents and the character. Mm-hmm. So, so right. I don't know if we want to beat this one in any more. I mean, it's, I it's ongoing. Done. It's no, still man. going. But uh, like, just the interesting thing is watching people are fighting back. Like the name calling isn't yeah. working anymore. It's same in politics and stuff. People are fed up. If, so, yeah. if if you're not already a Mark Millar fan, um, go check out his work because he doesn't need the money, but to whatever extent you're able to sh- show a little bit of support. Obviously mm-hmm. you want to go to your LCS and pick up a book, go, go pick up some back issues from your LCS, um, pick up some Mark Millar books um, just to begin to send, send a signal as, as uh, vote with your dollars, Dude. vote with your dollars, because we've, we've, co- we've made this comment before that we all have our theories. We'll have our opinions, but at the end of the day, what actually fixes the market will be discovered through the profit and loss observed and, and experienced by mm-hmm. the the retailers right we can we can say we can spend all day thinking what marvel could do or should do same thing for dc they are going to do what they're going to do the retailers are the ones who are going to have to navigate these rocky um the, this rocky passage so support them to whatever extent you can if you've got a crowdfunded book that you love show it to them and maybe they can get some of get some of those in but ultimately the retailers are going to have to to navigate their way through it you just have to be there to vote with your dollar that's right definitely definitely yep yep, yep. <clears throat> dude right. richard i want yes, to know sir. about your book yes so before you want me to bring it up before uh, we start I, I, uh, coming into uh, you, Richard, we're going to play your trailer first for yeah. the audience. So okay. here we have the trailer for Blood and the Sword.
Yeah, cool, cool. Nice. Yeah, uh, Blood of the Sword, uh, you know, it starts with, uh, you know, uh, me campaigning the last goodbye. Last goodbye was uh, one of the first comics I ever wrote, and I brought it to uh, crowdfunding, right? And I was able to, uh, you know, back when I was selling it at the conventions, like I mentioned, the WonderCon, I was selling it just the inks. So I was like, you know what? I got this art. Let me get it colored and let me do this crowdfunding thing. Because if all goes wrong, I still have uh, the uh, the inks. I still have the art. And it was a little bit more security than trying to go out and do a new project and it falling. Because <clears throat> I've got uh, crowd, uh, projects that have failed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. prior to even crowdfunding where it's like, hey, the artist f falls through or doesn't fall through or doesn't come through. And then, you know, uh, you know, I paid a. Uh, the money up front and then i didn't get it and then it's like okay i save the money and then you know it's just a crazy a lot of crazy stuff you know this independent comic game you know but uh that was a success and then i was like okay i i feel that i got the the people's uh trust so i brought out uh, a comic book a western comic book called uh devil from talent flats now devil from talent flats it didn't uh it's when everyone wasn't really fulfilling their campaigns on time so it's like you know what I was hearing the, you know what, with this gets back, you got my support. This gets back, or if you get funded, you got my dollar. And I'm like, I need your dollar now for this to get funded. So it was, it was, uh, you know, uh, Craig knows the deal, man. It, 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 that's how it was, man. And it's like, okay, the game changed. You know what I mean? The game evolves. And I didn't get mad and blame CG. I didn't get mad and blame the customers. I didn't, I'm just like, okay, let me figure it out, you know? So one day I'm playing Conan. And, uh, you know, um, you know, the Conan, the, the online game and this alligators attacking me. My daughter's watching it because, you know, like, you know, how you can make little thralls and stuff. So I was like, OK, this one's you. And then she just followed me. She's like, that's me. I'm like, yeah, that's you. You know, come on. Come on with that. We're going to go collect uh, stuff. So this alligator is attacking me. And she's like, uh, I'm like killing it. She's like, don't kill the alligator, dad. It's my friend. I'm like, it's not your friend, you know. Because she thinks every animal is her friend. I'm like, it's not your friend. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like kind of frustrated. And I'm being sarcastic with her. I was like, if it's your friend, what's his name? And she said, Mango. And then boom, it was just like fireworks in my head. Oh, my God. A human, humanoid, alligator, uh, companion with a uh, sword and sorcery. And it was just like, it was just, and I'm like, okay, so what happens? And then she starts telling me, because my daughter, she loves telling stories. She has this crazy imagination. And, uh. That's that's how it went, uh, came with Blood and the Storm. So I had the idea, but I was like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And I know, you know what? The only way to do it is to have it completed. Have it completed because then I have full confidence of the customer. How do I do that? I'm going to make it 20 pages because I can pay that out of pocket, right? Mm -hmm. How else do I do it? I know that I need to gain and, and uh, uh, you know, raise money. How else can I do it? So I, I started looking into shirt printing, and then I bought shirt printing uh, equipment so now i can do everything in-house you know i get well, other than print the comics you know so i get the comics printed i print each shirt uh and then i'm just i'm good to go you know and my my goal was like you know what what if i took money out of the equation i just want you to read my book because i know if you read my book you're gonna like my book and then you're gonna read my second book and then you're gonna read my third book and if i could take money out of this equation or where it's never uh an issue where it's only five dollars, would, would would you do it? So basically, I wanted to do a gamble. I bet you five dollars that my book is, is is enjoyable, and that seems like a reasonable bet, you know. And I also put it up there for digital. So, my uh, because uh, a lot of the things too is man, shipping overseas. I remember uh, uh, last goodbye. I had one, thank God, and and I appreciate this person in Australia for buying it. But I had one shipper over there. And they actually, I, I, I totally undercharged it. Uh, the shipping came out to like $55. And basically, I paid them $20 to read my book. So <laughs> I was like, ah, this can't happen again. So I was like, you know what? And people are like, I knew that, hey, a 20-pager, I'm not going to pay $5 and then 35 That's $35, 40 for, uh, you know. So I do have it available if you want it. But if you just want to get the digital and maybe when the collection comes out, you could uh you could get that uh, and another thing I did is I wanted to have the first five pages up there with mm -hmm. lettering so you can read it. it it and you know what I just wanted to do a funny action pack uh adventure comedy that that it has some heart and, and it has some uh, characters that have motives you know so I was like you know what I'm gonna put five pages up you can kind of get the feel of it if it's something you're into grab it 
it, and if it's something that's like, ah, eh, let me wait on it, or maybe it's like, yeah, you know, I get you on an impulse buy for like five bucks. Like, hey man, you know that guy was kind of cool, you know. So I saw him on the stream. Yeah, five bucks. I throw, I throw five bucks at the guy. You know, cool, get it. So that's that's what I was trying to do. So, uh, Blood of the Sword is about two uh, swordsmen or or swords for hire that get uh, meet up with an acquaintance and uh, they uh, get put on a, a simple gig. And they, uh, everything goes wrong, and then the adventure's off and going. So, dude, so <clears throat> I've I've been seeing you post about it on Twitter, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I, I've I've been interested, but uh, I'll be honest, I prioritize our guests on this show over anybody else, and mm -hmm. so you know, I kind of wait, I watch a campaign and if yeah. it looks like, if it looks like it's going to end before, you know, uh, somebody gets booked on, on our show or whatever, mm -hmm. then I'll go ahead and, and, and back it and everything. But when I heard that we were going to have you on, I was like, sweet, because I'm really interested in this. Thank book you, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> for, for a couple of reasons is, mm -hmm. is one, um, like I, I've read the, the first five pages and I, I love the, uh, you know, kind of balance of humor and it, mm -hmm. like it's it's it, this could totally be a buddy comedy. That's what I, I wanted. Yeah. I wanted 80 cops, a, yes. 80 cops. Film. It has that that feel, that banter where yes. there, there's yes. the gentle giant and he plays it straight. But his heart, he, uh, Mango, is, his heart is gold. He mm -hmm. plays it straight. He has dry humor. He's funny, but he's very dry humor. And then Valen. He's just man. He's he's one of those guys that's arrogant, but he gets it done. And I have seen people in that. Like I compare it to like someone like a a Mayweather, where it's like, dude, this guy's so arrogant, but he gets it done, and people hate him for it. Like a John Jones, he's so arrogant, but he gets it done. You know, so, uh, you know that that's what I wanted. And yeah. uh, someone's just good at their stuff. You know, so. dude, and that, and that's I mean, it's totally how how it it seems. You know, but. Uh, but the thing is, you know, is is like uh, a lot of times we we save our backings for whenever the guest comes on. Yeah. So uh, so I I definitely backed you, and I can't wait for that T-shirt. Um, cool, when, cool. When you see it on there, I I'm not actually a small. I ordered a small because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, one Goals. of the other things Goals. that that I really like about this book is just kind of the setting. So as most of our people in our chat know. My son lives in Germany, and mm -hmm. indie comics is kind of our way of of being able to connect across nice. the ocean, you know. And he is a huge fantasy fan, mm -hmm. um, you know. So anything that's like sword and shield and stuff, he's that's gonna cool. be into. So, yeah. you know, I had to get the book and I had to get the Thank shirt, um, but. To our people in the chat, I know I'm going on and on. Yes, the gummy has kicked in. Um, <laughs> but to the so, people in our chat, check out that retail bundle. You get right. 12 issues. Now, mm -hmm. I want to issue a challenge to our chat. And if if uh, 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 Craig, if you can refresh real fast okay. and let's see what his number's at. Because so, I got a challenge for the chat. Here he's at right now is 95 with 1,570. So I'm just going to jump in there because you've been, you've been, the gummy's been kicking in. So for starters, I'm interested in the retailer tier as well, right? That's mm -hmm. 12 issues. You, so we talked about this last show. Um, if you have a table, like I'm going to have a table here, uh, I'm going to run night markets every Thursday and then I just yeah. sell books. If I've That's got cool. make money off it, man. Of your book, yeah. yeah, I'll throw them on my yeah. table. And, and, I, and I'll tell you why uh, why I did it, right? Because yeah. I was like, okay, I could do a 10, you know, because it's yeah. like, you know, like here's another strategy that I had to realize and that I had to strategize. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got the big guys, you know, the 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 EVSs, the the Annie Smiths, the, you know, all them, right? Uh, they can afford to have boutique items because they have mm -hmm. earned that right to, I'm not that. I'm not that that status. So what can I do to 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 help out my me me myself and the customers, right? So I was like, yeah. if I just kept it one cover and, and and printed a shitload, I could I could sell it for five and still make three dollars off it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that you know, and my goal is to get as many readers as I can. So what I when I was like, okay, so 
if I get two, right, uh, you know, it's uh, 12, you know, so it's basically uh, you're, you're, you're paying for uh, the, sh- the, the two. If you sell those, that covers shipping because shipping is going to be like 10 bucks, right? And then you have 10 copies to sell, and you basically got those at like two a piece. So you can sell it for five and still, you know, because it's like at that, I'm kind of just, you know, I'm making like 50 cents of the issue, but mm-hmm. I'm getting the readers and retailers are making money. And, you know, if you have that that night market, you're out there like, hey, check out this book, check out this book, because if you sell that, you make money. It's not just breaking even. Yep. So so, that, so that's where I'm caught. So I haven't backed yet. I've, I've got to get in and look at the shipping, but I will back tonight. So I promise sure, you. Sure. I, I just had to say that. If worst case, I'm just going to grab the digital. It's five bucks for the digital. Everyone who's out yeah. there, you know, just five dollars is all you got to throw out there to push this. I'd love to see this go from 95 to 100 backers. That would be insane. So you want me to hit that refresh button already? You say? Yeah, Chris? go ahead and hit the refresh and then I'll issue the challenge because right. I, I, I got to know. We'll see what happens already here on this show. Magical things happen on this show. And yeah. Let's see. Cool. Oh, it's whole night. So oh, close. Nice. That's so awesome. Oh, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's, nice. We're going to hit 100. We're going to hit 100. Okay, Dude, so what's for the sure. That, yeah. That's cool. So, okay. So the challenge is, and, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that some, some of you in the chat have backed. Um, but yeah. I was, I was well, going to say. Did. Yes. Thank you so if, much. If, uh, mm-hmm. if, if, if we can get uh, 10 more backers by the time I wake up in the morning, then, then I'll back the, uh, I'll, I'll back the uh, retail bundle as well. Um, and but, people, people, he works 60 hours a week. He's going to be do. sleeping <laughs> in late. Okay, go, yes. Keep going, Chris. Yeah. Um, but anyways, on top of that, if you back, back that retail bundle, and then I challenge every single one of you that, that does this to take those extra issues to your LCS and see if they will put them Ooh. on their shelves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep two, take 10 up to your LCS, see if they'll put them on the shelves, help Richard out. That would just be dope. That would be awesome because yeah. <clears throat> the goal is to get readers, you know? Yes. That's why well, it's like, even with digital, right? If... I, I don't encourage it because I want my backers to have money. But, you know, if people were to get it, upload it, all that, whatever, you know, <clears throat> and I come across new readers that way, it's a win, man. It's a win. I, I'm just trying to entertain. And uh, I feel like if, if people like my stuff and, and read it and they enjoy it, then, uh, you know, they'll come back to it. You know, they'll, they'll you know, because I'm only trying to get better. I'm only trying to entertain like this, uh, this 20 is it's 20 pages, but it kind of, it's like a pilot episode of what's to come. So you kind of know where everyone is, where everyone stands. And then <clears throat> issue two is already written. I'm waiting to, to send these all out. And, uh, then I start, uh, the paying off, uh, Brian to start drawing it again. And with that stuff's going to happen, man. Don't think this is, you know, th- there's action, but it's, it's, you know, I mean, if you read the last goodbye, you're like, you, you'll see that. Oh, wow. He is capable of being a, a dark, <laughs> a dark writing individual, you know, because it's uh, that's pretty gritty in itself, you know. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it, it's even though my daughter uh, came up with the character from Mango, which is always funny because she's like, you know, if people are like, if you don't buy me a car, dad, I'm going to relinquish my <laughs> my rights to Mango. And you're not going to, you know, she's going to take away her licensing rights and stuff. That's so funny. we got to negotiate. But uh but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like issue two is, is gonna be uh, is gonna be so, so, uh, just as action pack, if not more. And I, I like to when I write my stories, everything matters. Like, cause I went to film school, right? And uh, the the instructor said, "Listen, write every page like it costs three hundred thousand dollars." Because that's how much it's going to cost for everyone to come in, everyone to set up, everyone to craft. And if that ain't worth it, it ain't worth it, man. It, you know? So, yeah. So that's where I kind of like, oh, I took that to, I got to pay for this page. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need to make yeah, it worth yeah, it. Yeah. And with that, it, it, it helps me as a writer, but it also uh, the uh, the the true uh, reward goes to the reader. So I'm Richard. happy for that. Richard, thank you so yes, much sir. for coming on. Thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. 
and those of you in the chat, you heard Chris Faction's uh, uh, challenge. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let mm -hmm. let's do this, and um, I hope you come back, sir. Hope you come back. Oh, cool. Sure. So, Craig, Craig, uh, there's no jackknife. Um, why don't you why don't you uh, do one last uh, shout oh, out? Oh, we made it. That's right. Under yo, yo, nice. So I didn't want to do that shipping. That shipping a little bit expensive, but I had no problem. I'll, I'll move those books. I'll move those books. Oh to yeah, the markets. So Where are you in Canada? Are you? Are yeah, you in yeah. Canada? Yeah, people. Yeah. I'll take care of you. I'll throw yeah. some extra books. I'll take care of you, man. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So look, yeah, I, mean, I didn't know you're. Yeah, man, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Me. I love it. <laughs> cool, Thank, cool. You, Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank hey, you I, I gotta so say, man, I, I like your show, man. This is this is cool. This is like one of my favorite <laughs> indie shows now. Nice, because no one's yeah. talking over everyone. You have someone that. Uh, that's you know delegating it is like it's like uh, I don't want to say MSNBC but like a news uh thing you know where they're like, like you know they have someone well, with, is, with it like, is it like the know? good old days of the McLaughlin report? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Jason yeah. actually has electrodes hooked up to my chair, so oh, I okay, have, I have to do what he says. <laughs> I just have shame and <laughs> guilt issues, like oh you. You know, like it's always about you, Richard. Right. Always have to interrupt, you know? Richard. Richard, I love following you on Twitter. Um, Thank uh, you. The kindness, the kindness tour rolls on. Yes, please continue yes. to spread the words about the Friday nights, and we will see yes, you back definitely sometime. And then, Craig, I don't know what kind of madness you have up your sleeve this week because every week I don't know what to expect. But, <laughs> sir, how we roll it out? Okay, Take us. So Oh, go, go, go ahead. Gone, I just want to say thank you so much to the chat. Thank you so much, everyone who pushed this thing over 100 backers tonight. Thank you again, Jason, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us, Richard. Again, thank everyone you. in the chat, Friday nights. We're here every Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to keep the show rolling. So I couldn't find anything on Mark Wade, but I found the guy whose chair you took at a convention, Jason. Oh, no. Uh, Figured we just outros with a little bit of another Mark. So with the, the Marks that I know, <laughs> we're going to outro with him. And I hope everyone has a killer weekend. And thank you so much for joining me. Let's go. Bring it. So we're going to play a game here. Okay. We're going to answer. We're going to play a game. The game is called Stupid or Liar. <laughs> so okay. either you were too stupid to realize what our type was sarcastic, or you're going to say you didn't realize it was sarcastic and you're lying. So pick one. Uh, stupid. Everything's stupid. Everything's stupid. I think the mark. Everything's stupid. Or they keep me just dead. Wow. Mr. Mark, not to drop, but prefer to train the line. Stand the line. It is mad of the time. It seems like a holly. Or maybe it's a cordy. What's very sweet to the kiss of the girl from the sea? Everything's to me. Everything's to me. I get the mark. Everything's to me. It's a part of the crowd. Who does this? What? I mean, what? Everyone's too bad. I'm 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 too you said you just call you call me Nazi Santa Claus before. I'm, I must be a Nazi. Listen, listen, Ethan. Here's the deal. Everything is to be. Everything is to be. I get to mark. Everything is to be. Or maybe just that. Oh, red, moonshine, and twiglet. To be. Pika, Oz, and Liam. To be. Skyver. Ralph, and Klein, Every time. Dave, Dollar, TJ, and Java, Doors, The Gip, and Chris, Gila, Summer, and Saggy, Dilla, Daria, and Vic, Nasser, Doug, and Mike. Very stupid. Listen, sociopath, you know, sociopath, I told you, I'm not debating you anymore. You want me, come see me. I've got you covered. I got you, my friend, and if I don't ever see you, I'm going to assume it's you who is the coward and the woman.
Come see me, my friend. I'm bigger than you, dude. Yeah, I agree. I am. <laughs> well, I mean, not I physically. That's not possible. I don't care about the comments. I'm just sick of him being infatuated with me. Like, get a life, man. He, he either wants to fight me or fuck me. So it's one or the other, and I'm going to assume he wanted to fuck me. So just bring it, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of this bullshit. I'm, I'm so sick of this. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm just going to welcome it. Bring it. I've been in enough fights in my life out in the open. You know? You know what? Bring it. It seems like that's what he wants. Just come on. Like, get a life. Man. He, he either wants to fight me or fuck me. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. But if he wants to, let's go. Yes. Bring it. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Bring it. Yes. I could go fuck myself or fuck you, Mark Brooks. He, he, he either wants to fight me or fuck me. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. You know, I think that's pretty clear. I have no interest in talking to or dealing with this dude. He, he, he either wants to fight me or fuck me. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Come on. Fight me or fuck me. Let's go. We can go back into a back alley in one of the conventions and we'll handle it mano a mano, him and I. Because I'm sick of this shit. If he wants to, let's go. Yes. Bring it. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Bring it. Yes. I could go fuck myself or fuck you, Mark Brooks. He, he, he either wants to fight me or fuck me.